You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Donald because I have to be. Ken Phillips is a seduction relationship expert, author, and he is our guest today. Thanks for being with us, Ken. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, so where were you born? And uh, tell us everything that happened to you growing up that led you to becoming a relationship expert. Well, I was born in Toronto. Um, I grew up in a family environment that wasn't quite as supportive as I would have wanted it to be. Um, as a result, I entered school and kind of ended up as a bit of a social outcast. I didn't really get along with all the other kids. Hmm. But uh, even though I didn't get along with them all that well, I still wanted to date girls. I mean, I was a guy back then, and um, I didn't get through. I didn't go through the the whole phase of well, girls have cooties or whatever. I was always into girls. Oh, ah, okay. And I ended up going through three really awful dating experiences that, at the end of which, made me just go, okay, I have to get this deal with, dealt with, or I'm going to go crazy. I was ready to kill myself at the end of it just because it was such a such an awful series of events. The uh, the first one was with a girl when I was maybe in elementary school, kind of transitioning until later on in life. And uh, she was a girl that I really liked and I really wanted to date. So at the time I figured, okay, the best way to do this is to write, you know, secret admirer letters. So I sat down and I wrote these letters on my computer and I typed them up and I rode my bike all the way to her place and I dropped these letters in her mailbox. Now we're not talking one letter here, we're talking maybe two or three or maybe four letters. Okay. And and after I had written these letters, she kind of started asking around going, okay, so who wrote these letters? She kind of, because of the way I had written them, they were so intense that she thought maybe it was a joke from somebody. I signed them all, your secret admirer, so it was really kind of, uh, it was kind of out there for, you know, a kid in just starting high school. Yeah. Well, what happened was, eventually, it kind of got out that it was me, because I had told one of her friend's friends that it was me. I had finally admitted it. Oh, okay. And then it got right back to her, and, well, at that point, she knew, so I figured, okay, well, now she knows. So now that she knows my feelings for her, all I have to do is ask her out, because, well, that's how it works. Right. Uh, so when I talked to her, she told me, well, I like you, and I think you're a nice guy, but I'm just not ready to date. Uh, okay. And I went, okay, if she's not ready, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So I backed off, and I found out a few months later that she actually had started dating one of my best friends at the time's cousin. Uh, and that was something I could never really understand. I was just like, well, what, what, what happened there? It wasn't until much later in my life that I was able to look back in that situation and go, ah, I wasn't the type of guy that made her want to actually go, okay, this is the guy I want to date. Right. After that experience, I went through high school kind of in a daze, liking girls and kind of pursuing but never really getting anything. Um the one notable experience from that, my second really awful experience, was this girl that I really, really liked. I mean, I thought about this girl all the time. What happened was that uh, this girl was one of the few girls who was willing to be nice to me. And as a result of that, I thought that that niceness meant that she liked me. Okay. So, I was, so we would hang out, I would call her up and we'd talk on the phone and she'd tell me all the things that were going on in her life. I would spend time hanging out with her and her family. We would we would watch movies and just spend tons and tons of time together. But she would never let me touch her. I would always, and every day my thing was, I would ask her to be my girlfriend. Because I had just finished reading this novel. And in this novel, the main character was like, uh, his thing was, okay, I'm going to be really persistent. I'm always going to, I'm going to ask this girl over and over and over again to be my girlfriend until she says yes. And in the book, the girl eventually says yes. So I figured, oh, that must be the way to do it. All right. So with this girl, that's exactly what I did. Every single day for maybe three or four months, I asked, do you, will you be my girlfriend? Will you be my girlfriend? Every single time she said no. Right. Hmm, okay. I felt like I'd been lied to by this novel. One of the things that... Uh, 
I didn't realize at the time was that the main character in that book, number one, was fictional. And number two, the girl he asked already liked him. So that type of chasing actually created attraction and didn't kill attraction. At the time, I didn't understand this. Looking back now, I do. And uh, after that experience, well, I, I became kind of... I became even more shut down than I had, had been. I mean, at this point in my life, I had gotten to self-development stuff, self-improvement stuff, and was working on myself, working on my own self-image and how I interacted with other people and becoming more social and things like that. But when this happened, it really made me question how much of what I was working on, how much of the effort that I was putting in was actually creating anything of use. I was wondering if all that effort that I was putting in was really worth it. Right. Yeah. So I shifted my focus a little bit from just becoming more social and becoming uh, a better person to how do I get this dating thing, this girl thing handled? And I started reading some things online. I started getting some newsletters and I uh, started hanging out on, on forums and internet websites where people actually talked about some of these things. Mm -hmm. And I slowly got a little bit better. I got good enough that I managed to end up with my very first girlfriend. Oh, okay. Who was a great girl, and still is a great girl. We ended up dating for a long time, um, at least two years, perhaps a little bit more. And she did lots of great things for me. And it, for, all, for all intents and purposes, it was a fairly average relationship. Right. The only thing that really bothered me about that relationship that was a big part of why we ended up going our separate ways was that we never had sex. So after two years in that relationship, I was still a virgin. Hmm. And at the time, again, I could not understand why that was. Looking back now, I know that it was because I never presented myself that's the type of guy she would want to have sex with. At the time, I figured, well, we were in a relationship, well, why aren't we having sex? Does she not? I actually hadn't even gotten to the point where I could ask the question, well, what's the deal? Right. I was just confused. I couldn't even ask the right questions at that point. Hmm. After that relationship ended, I made it my mission to lose my virginity, essentially. I went, you know, I've been working on this girl thing, this dating thing, kind of half-assed for quite a while. And at the age of 22, 23, I was still a virgin, and I just simply said, okay, I need to get this dealt with. There's no more wishy-washiness. There's no more half-hearted commitment. I'm going for this 100%. And that's what I did. I started really investing my time and my energy in figuring it out. Oh, okay. So then what is the process that, that you took on when you decided this was going to be your main focus? Was it going back and doing the things you'd done before? Or did you change it? Or how so? Well, what happened was, when I initially committed to my goal, I figured, okay, I'm going to be able to do this by myself. You know, I have some of this material that's going to help me, but I'm fairly sure that I can do this on my own. What happened was, I started going out on dates, I started getting some experience, 